Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Dear Father, we kneel before you today because you alone are God and there is no one like you. You spoke and the world began. You alone raise the sun every morning and the moon every night. You alone wake us up every morning. You made the sun, the wind, and the wind. You not get only give us life, but also the promise of eternal life. We glorify you and praise you your precious name for all that you have done for your children father forgive us for our many sins we are sorry for being proud selfish disobedient and for being unkind to others father we are sorry for not worshiping you fully and for disrespecting your name please forgive us god we thank you for giving us food on our tables each and every day. We thank you for our homes that you have given us, our parents and our families. At this moment, we pray specially for the poor people, not only in Barbados, but all around the world. God, please give them a sign that you love them, that you are real and that you have not forgotten them. Place people in their lives to help them so that they may come to see you as their Lord and Savior. Father, hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 
rock of ages. Father, you are a mighty God. You provide for us and protect us. You help us because you love and care for us. You are good and faithful to us all the time and every time. We give thanks for your love and mercies. Father, you are great and we will bless you at all times. Father, we ask that you forgive us for not loving you more and adoring you in all that we say and do. Father, remind us of those we need to forgive and help us to forgive them as you forgive us. We give thanks for all that you have done and continue to do for us. We thank you for your mercies and your countless blessings. We thank you for bringing our country safely through COVID-19 pandemic and pray that you would help those people all around the world that are sick because of the virus. We ask that you heal them in a special way. For those who have lost loved ones, we pray that you would comfort them. We pray for all the children around the world that may have lost their parents during COVID-19 pandemic as well. Lord, please look after them and also comfort them. 
We also pray for our church and for our leaders that you will bless them in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful, loving God, allow your word to enter deep within us on this night, that we may be reassured of your saving work in our lives and in our world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ponder with me for a few moments on these words taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the first part of verse 9. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. Our world has endured much pain and suffering in recent months. Our world has experienced loss of life, loss of income, loss of social mobility, and a loss of peace of mind. We have become a people riddled with anxiety about the future. In light of the pain and suffering we have experienced, given the anguish and distress we have endured, it would not be surprising if many are asking, where is God in times like these? Is God powerless? Why has God not come to our aid? In our reading from 2 Corinthians, Paul answers these questions. And Paul claims that in the midst of suffering, we must know that it is really God who sustains us. Paul claims that it is in times of struggle, in times of adversity, in times of weakness, that the power of God is revealed to us. Paul makes these reassuring claims based on his personal experiences and on his understanding of the cross.
According to Paul, weakness, suffering, is a time when we experience the presence and the power of God. In Paul's experience, God's grace is sufficient, for God's power is made perfect in our weakness. In Paul's experience, God's grace is sufficient, for God's power is revealed in our suffering. So Paul writes that rather than despising suffering, he will boast about his suffering. Paul writes that rather than boasting about his exceptional personal experiences, rather than boasting about his achievements, he will boast about his suffering. For Paul believes that God's power is made perfect in weakness. To understand Paul's claims, we must examine what was going on in Paul's life at the time. In chapters 10 to 13 of 2 Corinthians, we learn of a time when serious tensions existed between Paul and the Corinthian church. The apostle had set up the first church in Corinth, and now others, who Paul disparagingly referred to as super apostles, were seeking to take over the church. These super apostles were claiming that Paul was a feeble and weak personality that he was timid in his speech, that he said one thing in the presence of the Corinthians and something else went away from the Corinthians. These persons claim that they were more spiritually gifted than Paul. They argue that all the floggings, the shipwrecks, the imprisonments, the stoning, all the suffering Paul had endured were signs that Paul's faith was weak. These newcomers did everything they could think of to discredit Paul's ministry and promote their own cause. But Paul mounted a spirited defense against these super apostles. His sarcasm is biting in verses 2 to 5. Paul writes about a man, meaning himself, who in a vision 14 years ago had been taken up to the third heaven. Paul says that he had experienced paradise, the highest heaven, he says that this man, meaning himself, had experienced things that mortal could not even talk about. Paul is in effect saying, rather than being spiritually weak, he had been involved in the greatest spiritual experience ever. Paul is claiming that these super apostles have nothing on him, but he is saying more. Paul is claiming, that it was not through his personal experiences that he knew of God's power. It was not through his hearing things that could not be repeated by mortals that he knew of the nature of God's power. Rather, it was through his weakness, his suffering, that he had experienced God's all-sufficient grace and power. Paul writes that he had a weakness some disability which he does not describe, but which he refers to as a thorn. Paul writes that he asks God to remove this thorn, this weakness, this source of suffering three times. But God had answered in the words of our text, my grace is sufficient for power is made perfect in weakness. Paul is sharing a divine truth with all of us. Paul wants us to know that in our suffering, God reveals his power. That during our times of crises and adversity, we will experience God's wonder-working power. That in our times of distress, we will find our strength in God. One songwriter put it this way, When I am down, and oh my soul so weary, when troubles come, and my heart burdened be, then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. Then the songwriter adds, you raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. History is filled with this truth. 
the truth that God's power is revealed in our weaknesses, that God's power is experienced when we feel helpless, that God raises us up when we are down. Was the deliverance of the Hebrews after 400 years of slavery in Egypt? The deliverance of the Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace? The deliverance of Daniel from the hungry lions? The deliverance of Caribbean people from plantation slavery? The deliverance of the black people in South Africa from apartheid? Were these not all revelations of God's power in a time of human suffering? Tonight, we may be burdened by our own suffering, our own adversities, our own thorns. Tonight, we may feel we lack the strength and the courage to face the challenges of life in 2020. But Paul is asking us to transition to a different state. He is asking us to transition to a state of believing that through it all, through it all, God's power will be revealed in our lives. Paul is pleading with us to believe that God's grace is sufficient to meet our every need. Paul wants us to believe that God is our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help in times of trouble. He wants us to believe that our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Paul wants to reassure us that when the Lord is our light and our salvation, we have nothing to fear. Paul wants us to be able to sing, through the sunshine and the rain, we will make it. Through the sickness and the pain, we will make it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We will make it. That's Paul's claim. We will make it by the grace of God. Paul found it to be so. The hymn writers found it to be so. The psalmists found it to be so. And Jesus found it to be so. The life of Jesus is the ultimate demonstration of the truth that God's grace is sufficient. Of the truth that God's favor is enough. Of the truth that in our times of suffering, God's power is made perfect. Jesus' life shows all of this to be true. The Gospel writer Luke in verse 40 of his second chapter had this to say about Jesus. And the grace of God was upon him. Now follow Jesus' life while the grace of God was upon him. Immediately after his baptism, Jesus went into the wilderness and had nothing to eat for 40 days. And he had no companions but wild animals for 40 days. Jesus was at his weakest, physically and emotionally, when the devil sought to entice and entrap him. But according to Luke, the grace of God was upon Jesus. And even in his weakness, even in his suffering, God's power was at work. In his state of weakness, Jesus was able to resist the wiles of the devil. Now fast forward to when Jesus first told the disciples he must suffer and die. Peter told him, this cannot be so. But Jesus rebuked Peter and Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem toward his cross and toward his suffering. Why? Because the grace of God was upon him and the grace of God was sufficient. Finally, Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane. He is distressed, in agony, deeply troubled. One gospel writer likened his perspiration to drops of blood so great was his anguish. He prayed three times to have the cup of death taken from him. But the grace of God was upon him. It was sufficient. It was sufficient to allow Jesus to endure his thorns, his crown of thorns. It was sufficient to allow Jesus to endure his suffering. The grace of God was sufficient 
when Jesus was at his weakest suffering on the cross. Then God's power was revealed, lifting Jesus to the joy of the resurrection and to eternal glory. Then the power of God was at work, offering salvation to all mankind through Jesus' suffering. Beloved, the cross is the ultimate illustration of God's power being revealed when we are weakest, when we are suffering, when we are most in need. The cross, that symbol of suffering, that symbol of weakness, shows the world that God's grace is indeed sufficient. So tonight, our world may be suffering. Tonight, like Paul, we may have thorns. Like Jesus, we may have a crown of thorns. But tonight, the word of God invites us not to seek out suffering, not to believe that God causes our suffering, but to embrace our suffering, to embrace the cross. For in the cross, we have an assurance. We have an assurance that in the midst of difficult circumstances, when the thorns are most painful, God will indeed lovingly reach out to us and whisper, My grace is sufficient, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Let us pray. God of grace and power, we are awestruck by your deep, unfathomable love for your creation. Grant us on this night peaceful rest as we look to face our future under your wings. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
family of God, prayer is a remedy for every malady. And when we are afflicted with thorns in the flesh, we should give ourselves totally to prayer. If an answer is not given to the first prayer or to the second prayer, we are to continue praying. Troubles are sent to teach us to pray. And troubles are continued to teach us to continue in constant prayer. When God does not take away our troubles and temptations, yet if he gives grace enough for us, we have no reason to complain. Grace signifies the goodwill of God towards us. And that should be enough to enlighten and enliven us. And it is sufficient to strengthen and comfort us in all our afflictions and distresses. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Therefore, his grace is manifested and magnified in our lives. When we are weak in ourselves, then we are strong in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we feel that we are weak in ourselves, we go to Christ, receive strength from him, and enjoy his divine strength and grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with all of us now and forevermore. And the children of God say, Amen. for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.